Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime branding on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So... If you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. Uh, We're going to move on to our final topic. Um... So we just talked a ton about Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I hope people that uh, sometimes... I, I don't think I've ever heard the criticism that we don't talk about something, but I feel like it's a criticism of myself. You know, mm-hmm. as much as I blame Monolith Soft and Nintendo that we haven't talked about Xenoblade Chronicles 2 enough. Um, I mean, look at all this Odyssey stuff in front of me right now. Can you blame me? <laughs> but again, <laughs> marketing budget and how you show a game. Um, I think Xenoblade Chronicles 2 could... It feels weird saying this. I think if they did it right, it could be like the new Final Fantasy because I think a lot of people are sick of Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Or a Nintendo Final Fantasy. Uh, yeah, Nintendo's least. Final Fantasy, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, I don't know. They just never seem to do it that way. So coming out talking a ton about that, um, I think one of the most anticipated releases happening this month, since that's next month, on Switch is Doom. Yes. And it's developed and ported by Panic Button. Uh, in October, some of the folks behind Panic Button expressed concern that fans were too focused on frame rate and resolution rather than if the game is fun. In fact, my video I covered on this is our most viewed video in like three months. Um, so a lot of people interested in um, Panic Button's take on how fans are reacting to the game. Uh, the game releases this week, the week that the, the podcast is coming out on Friday. And at the time of recording this episode... We're, we're about a week out from launch, and we haven't seen any direct feed footage. Should mm. we be worried? The only time they've shown off this no. game, it's been shown off twice now. One was a press event, and all of it was off-screen, off-camera, portable mode. Uh, where it, The resolution go- bounces between 720p and 540p. Uh, it's a mostly solid 30 FPS, couple like a couple frame drops if you look close. Um, but again, even Digital Foundry had a hard time trying to track that because again, it's all off camera feed um, of mm. even their own gameplay. Which you know is the camera glitching? Is it the game? Mm-hmm. Uh, did they feel it while they were playing? Uh, and then on top of that, uh, the it's been shown one other time, which looked like it was at another media event, which might have been in another country because we just got a new video. Uh, recently showing off. Basically, it's the exact same demo uh, that they showed off before, but again, it was in tabletop mode. This is a game that, uh, at least based on the viewership of that one video that I have, and some other, like when Doom was announced, um, a lot of people are really, really interested in playing Doom on the go. Um, or, a lot, or, or at least interested in how it performs. Mm-hmm. But no direct feed footage. No docked mode footage. Heading into launch. I mean, not even a commercial showing off dock mode footage. Mm-hmm. Mm. Should we be worried that there's something wrong with this game? That they don't want to show you dock mode because it's not good looking. It's just going to turn people off. Um, so they also did something strange, not panic button, but uh, Bethesda. Yeah. Um, with Doom, when it actually released originally, the still the same uh, game yeah. uh, last year, uh, where they didn't release review copies, and everyone took that to be a bad sign of, uh oh, this game isn't going to be good because they didn't release a copy early for reviews to get them out yeah. ahead of the release of the game. Yeah. I'm curious if it's something along that same lines of thinking where they just don't care what you think right now because they know something about it that we don't know maybe the game is in 720p in docked mode maybe but maybe it's a constant 60 frames per second 
and it plays great. You know, maybe but, they're trying to make sure people don't focus on the fact that the yeah they didn't hit 1080, they didn't hit 900, but they hit that 60 FPS, which people desperately want out of Doom. But wouldn't that be something that you want to advertise because that could affect sales? Yeah, 60 FPS. Like, like not having reviews, there's still going to be people that buy the game day one and will tell you if it's good. Mm-hmm. Like 60 FPS is a big deal for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. yeah it is um and that's why some people have you know that's why it, it was weird as a panic button responded saying that it, you know stop focusing on the fact that it's sub 720p at times and not you know we targeted 30 fps for, for this game focus on the fun that sounds great but if doc mode is 60 fps how do you not say that that that'll leave it's everyone's concerns a bit oh right. so portable we get it portable mm-hmm. it has to be 30 but when we play it on our tv we're getting that 60 fps like that's a big mm-hmm. deal mm-hmm. right I don't know that that is like that would literally all all the criticism that Panic Bot basically threw at the fans that were reacting really bad about the 30 FPS would be nullified by just saying, well, yeah, but you get it 62 if you want it. Right. Um, yeah. So I, that's why I don't. Uh, I want you to be right, five day. <laughs> Seriously, like me too. <laughs> not. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that it's going to make me buy the game any less. Like 30 FPS, I think is playable. A lot of people say, oh, it's yeah. not playable. We've been playing 30 FPS games for a long time. Destiny 2 is 30 FPS. It is playable. Is it the Mm -hmm. ideal level of playability? Of course not. Mm. 60 FPS and above is ideal for basically every game out there. Mm. Um, I mean, heck, the the Razer just is releasing a a phone that runs at 120 FPS on the screen for like the first time ever. It's crazy. Um, it, like it has that refresh rate that no other phone has it and even not playing games is just silky smooth using the phone mm-hmm. uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM which is not even standard the top level phone? Android uh, Snapdragon processor nice. uh, they are like going balls to the wall and they put like legit real speakers with bass in them like front facing two of them that have like tweakers in them and stuff like they're like oh my god so, wow. so wow. it actually makes me want to want to get rid of my phone yeah, it's, right? it's a $700 phone which really isn't I mean, the phone I have is more expensive than that. Um, yeah. And it has, like, no BS stuff added to the uh, operating system of, no of Android. No bloatware. Wow. Um, it's like, wow. I mean, I watched Unbox Therapy do a thing. And he's like, this is the first time I've unboxed a phone that I think same day I'm taking the SIM card out of my current phone. And I'm switching to that my main phone right away. It's the first time they've ever made a phone. Um, and it's supposed to be targeted at gamers. And you could understand with the, with the refresh rate and all that stuff, but uh, that's the kind of stuff that feels like it should just be standard in a phone. Mm-hmm. But nobody's doing it. No, I there are front facing speakers on some phones, but they don't care about the low end, about the bass, how music mm-hmm. sounds coming out of your phone. Right. They don't care about the smooth. Oh, people have been uh, standardizing this, for, and that's like the thing. Sixty FPS in Doom is a big deal. Mm-hmm. So if it has that, and they're not saying that, it could be a ha, nice surprise. But everyone went in thinking it's just 30 and no one's going to find it. We're heading to a busy holiday season. No one's going to hear it. Hear the noise out there that it's 60 FPS in fact. Yeah. Maybe. Um, but you gotta remember, they might it's just coming be out overconfident. Like, it's like Doom, Skyrim. Uh, oh, I'm trying to remember it all. L.A. Noir, And now there's another game, a Rocket League. Oh, yeah. All of that's packed yeah. into like five days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like any news, like, oh, Doom is 60 FPS. Oh, then you hear about Rocket League. Oh, like, yeah. like it's going to be overshadowed so quickly yep. if that's the case. Um, and got to remember, this is Panic Button that seems to be handling a lot of the marketing, even though obviously it's Bethesda's budget. Uh, that you know, you look at Panic Button uh, also ported another game on Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to remember which game that was. Oh, was it Rocket League? I think they did the Rocket League port. I think that's the one. Um, and Rocket League, yeah, 60 FPS, but it's always been 60 FPS. They said, no matter what we do to this game, it's going to be 60 FPS because the people behind the game said it has to be 60 FPS. <clears throat> Panic mm-hmm. Button was giving carte blanche to say, ah, we're going to target 30. Um, yeah, There was another game they ported that's actually released. Uh, I think they did the Minecraft port, um, and that had issues in terms of uh, there not being any differences between docked and handheld mode. And then it got patched in later. And maybe that's what's going to happen with Doom. But it feels like if that happens with Doom, yeah. it's going to be 1080p. Like, I, I, when I say should we be worried, I think 
if they don't show any direct feed footage before launch or until like the day before launch, oh. when most people that already pre-ordered are going to miss it. Um, it's because the game runs at 720p, uh, basically runs exactly the same as in handheld, and when you blow that up on a big screen, it doesn't look good. Mm-hmm. It looks like an extremely low-setting version of Doom that is unattractive, whereas a lot of stuff like that is hidden on a smaller screen. Mm-hmm. Potentially, yeah. And that I think that's the concern. Um, mm-hmm. Is but by at least what I've seen of people talking about, they're like, why? Ha- why can't we get direct feed footage? Why is this not happening? And we're and I'm sure just like the original Doom, there's not going to be allowed any review copy or any footage shown of the game until they have release. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and my thing is, is, if you want people to stop talking about frame rate and actually worry about if the game looks fun or not, how is anybody going to know if the game looks fun or not if you don't put out any sort of footage of the game? And The best way to show your game is direct feed. Right. And mm-hmm. it, it, right now we only have, what, speculation on, on what the FPS is? Yeah. That's, of course that's what people are going to be talking about. Because it's all speculation and we don't have any footage. Hello. <laughs> yeah, it's. <laughs> I liken this to if, if Nintendo fans want to think about a similar situation, Breath of the Wild, when it was first shown off for the very first time, like actual gameplay. I'm not talking about the trailer mm-hmm. that showed off at E3. Man, how long ago was that? Twenty. Was it 2014? I believe Something like that. They, they showed off the. That's when you know Ijinoma infamously snapped his fingers and then on the screen then we saw what looked like a, a pre-set up scene with a guardian chasing you um, and that and the yeah. world changed a lot from that but we didn't see real gameplay like someone playing the game uh, until the game awards in December of that year I think it was the first ever game awards it was a huge deal like a big get for them to get Zelda gameplay but it was off screen it was like mm-hmm. off screen footage of a TV with EJ Noma playing it um, and this is at a time when people had already been doing like live streams, like direct feed gameplay where you could just overlay, you know, EG and all stuff on there. Like people were, have been doing this. Yeah. Like, live streaming yeah. wasn't new then. Um, so it was a bad showing because people are like, like squinting to see what's mm. going on on that TV in the little, in the corner. Like a majority of the screen that you're seeing is basically dead space. And there is EG and mm-hmm. and, Miyamoto front and center, and then up in the corner is Breath of the Wild. And no, we're going to talk about Breath of the Wild while you can barely see what's going on. Um, yep. And I'm not saying that's what's happened. There's some people who have set up their cameras to try to get like as direct footage as they can, but it's still not. It's still even in that case, one not fully representative of what people are going to see with their eyes themselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because again, there's compression. Also, like compression gets even worse when it's video of a screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's even worse. And on top of that, a lot of people want to know what it's like in Dr. Mode. Like, I, we're at a point that you can't just treat, uh, unless the game is specifically handheld only, you can't just treat the Switch as just a handheld. Mm-hmm. You have to take in, in the fact, like, Nintendo just released a graph on this, actually, um, that is something like 30% of people, or something like that, 30% of people uh, primarily play 80% of the time with their Switch in handheld mode. Uh, only 18% of the people play primarily 80% of the time in docked mode. However, combine that, there's like 60% of people that play both almost equally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can't ignore that that direct feed side. That that that. And again, like like people feared, obviously this could all be for nothing. We could find oh it's 1080p 60 fps. Somehow they did that. Or even if it's not 1080, I don't think anybody expects 1080p60. Uh, but even if it's yep. 720p60, or even if it's like the same settings, but it's locked 720p, mm-hmm. locked 30 fps, mm-hmm. uh, which it might not visually look that much better to you, but you're never gonna, you know, they don't want to see the resolution drop to 540 on a 1080p TV. Mm-hmm. Um, so like that would still be an improvement that I think is worth touting because mm-hmm. it's not locked on handheld from what we've seen. So if you could have a locked frame rate and all, you know, it, it makes it sound like you're not taking advantage of anything with Dr. and that's why you don't want to show it because you know it's not going – what you see already is pretty much what you're going to see on a TV because when you blow up that image on a TV and it's running at 540p, 
on a 1080p, like even my 32 inch TV yeah. is running at 540p, yeah. half the resolution yeah. of my TV. Oh no no no! You might as well just go back to the original. Yo, dude. No no no! <laughs> yeah, I'm, what am I playing? Playing the '90s version? Yeah, and that yeah. might even look better because I can, <laughs> right? I can run that at 1080p. <laughs> oh. And and that's I think the fear. And the thing is that fear shouldn't exist. I understand the right. fear of the reviews. Bethesda was setting a new. I think they do that with all their games now. Um, no reviews can release until the day of release. Um, so I th- still think the handout review copies. You just literally can't do anything with it. Until the day of release. Um, so whatever. It sucked, but now we know. It's a standard they kind of do with all their games. Uh, but this is weird. It is weird. This mm-hmm. is like... Th- imagine that we were getting Skyrim, but they never showed us footage of direct feed Skyrim. They have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It hasn't meant a lot, but it's there. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I mean, they've been a little weird with, is it the remastered version? Is it not? Is it a hybrid of it? Mm-hmm. Um yeah, they've been a little weird with that, but at least we've seen, like, you know, it was showed off initially as off screen when they revealed the Switch, but we've seen people direct feed playing it. Yep. <sighs> and it's Skyrim. It's a game everyone knows. Everyone's played a zillion times. Doom's only been out a year. Skyrim's been mm-hmm. on five. Yeah. Skyrim released on systems worse than Switch, so uh, we can actually look back to those six, systems actually. and be like, it's going to at least look like that. Yeah. Right? I think it came out 11, 11, 11. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, like, it's been on systems that are worse than switch. So like we have an idea that it, bare minimum, it's going to look like a, the 360 version. Mm. Um, bare minimum, like worst possible yep. scenario. Yep. Uh, doom has never been on anything worse than a PlayStation four or Xbox one. You can argue lower NPCs, but even lower NPCs are generally more powerful. Like their minimum specs for doom is basically more powerful than Xbox one and PlayStation four. Anyways. <laughs> so we've never seen anything on lower specs. So we don't know at all what to expect beyond right now 30 fps 720p that's variable and the thing is doom was variable on like it it wasn't always at constant 1080p on playstation 4 xbox one either um it it, it, did but it the reason that they vary it is to maintain the frame rate but like that's what's so frustrating about what people have seen in handheld mode is if you're gonna you already cut the frame rate in half and you're running a variable uh resolution and it still can't stay locked at 30. Uh, that has some people concerned. And again, dev builds, early builds, we don't know. But how close are we to release now? And we just, we, yeah. these aren't questions we should be asking anymore. Right. <laughs> so strange. Like, imagine if uh, all our, all that talk we did about Xenoblade Chronicles 2, <laughs> we just haven't seen any direct feed footage yet. Or Odyssey. Or Odyssey. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Tabletop mode only. Oh man, you're hurting me now. <laughs> you're hurting been me. awful. They would have been so bad. And this is the thing. Like, I'm. I have Doom pre-ordered. I plan to pick it up day one, nice. assuming I have the funds to pay off my pre-order. If I don't pick it up day one, it'll be like the next week. Um, it's one of the third-party games I'm planning to get. Uh, but unless I have it paid off day one, I could easily pull my money off that pre-order and put it somewhere else. If it comes out that. Yeah, the game uh, in handheld mode. You know how you, you thought you saw you know a couple frames here and there. Actually, it dips down into the teens sometimes. Eesh. And when you play mm. it on uh, docked mode, where it should be better, they didn't make any differences. <laughs> so it still dips into the teens, and it still doesn't stay at seven twenty p. And um, be bad. I don't know. Like everyone says, oh, panic button does you know is becoming a switch port expert. Huh. <laughs> They're gonna be proof gonna is be in the pudding. Name, proof is the panic in, button. Proof is in the yeah. They're gonna be hitting that panic button. <laughs> hey, oh, that's a good that's a good pun over there. Yeah, good no, job. right. Good job. Hey, I'm good for something. I mean, <laughs> Eric, are you worried? Like, I, I know I, Doom's not a game that necessarily like you're gonna pick up anyways. Not uh, that you not that you don't right. have interest in it, right. but like financially, yeah. like it's just really yeah. You you are getting out of sea, so like I, yeah. Um, again, I might not even be able to afford Doom, so mm-hmm. and I. This is my job. Right, <laughs> and I right. probably can't afford the one game, the one third party game people keep hyping up. It's one of those things that it's I can afford it. It's whether or not I should actually yeah, well, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's not like it's you're living like it's, in the poorhouse. Right, right, exactly. But, um, well, I'm that feels like I'm it. living at my parents' house. Yeah, so yeah. yes, I yes, yes. You have, the <laughs> point is is that if it wasn't for student loans, right. oh yeah, for sure. Thanks, oh, government, yeah, for sure. Um you would be fine. Yes. Um but I mean are, are I, you worried? 
I'm not, like I don't want to be worried. By the way, right? I've been defending Doom this whole time right. until this conversation. I'm, I'm like, wait a second, no direct view footage. What's up with that? Yeah, I'm worried for them. Yes, um, because this could easily be all put to be, put to bed, put to rest, whatever you want to call it. If if they would just come out and say, yeah, here's here's the major details. This is exactly what's going on, and this is what it's going to be. You know, it it, mm-hmm. it may not be the best. But this is what we're doing, and and you know. Well, my my concern, obviously, the concern in general for Switch owners is that we want third party support. We want tons of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Doom is a game that came out a year ago, so there's no reason to rush it to market mm-hmm. if you could do yeah, it that, better. Yeah, that's that's very true. If it's a big if, because again, game was never built for this low of tech. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, maybe this isn't the best they can do. Um, I don't know. I mean, they keep telling us focus on the fun. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, but give us something to show yeah, it that is it's weird fun. timing too because it is so close to Skyrim's release. Yeah, it's two two releases the same company within a week. Mm-hmm. It's like space them out if there's technical problems. Like, I, so people want to say, "Why aren't you worried about Skyrim?" It's Skyrim. Yeah. Okay, it's Skyrim, and again, there's versions of it on worse hardware. There isn't for Doom. We have no preset expectations for it beyond what's available on other systems, which is going to be vastly superior for obvious reasons that they are more powerful systems. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I, I worry because I think that Doom, it, it's such a good game. Mm. That the idea so of good. a portable Doom that you can also dock on your TV is so appealing to so many people. That, that, I think that's why our, the mm-hmm. video about Panic Button trying to defend themselves blew up so much. Not because people are mad at Panic Button, but because they want to believe. Yep. They want to believe that they ported this super amazing AAA game that is as current gen as it can possibly get for a game Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. over to a platform that uh, shouldn't, by any rights or means, be able to play it and made a passable (laughs) experience. That's what I want to believe. Mm -hmm. But I worry when they won't show off the mode that actually has the most power because maybe... Panic button doesn't fully know how to take advantage of that power in any meaningful way. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe because the easiest way to port games is to build it for the lowest common denominator. That's portable mode, right? Um, and if that's all they did, if they weren't allowed allowed the time, like with Skyrim coming out, I can't see that Bethesda would be like, "Hey, we can release Doom early spring." Mm-hmm. If if we can get a little extra out of that docked mode. Um, Instead, it might be so. Oh, we'll patch it later. Like, eh, no, the game's already an older game. You don't have to rush it. Right. But it's just like if we're if we're gonna get Resident Evil Seven, you don't have to rush it. It already came out. Mm-hmm. Just do it right. Yep. Do the best job you can at porting it. Um. Anyways, we'll see. Maybe my concern is nothing. I've been defending them for this entirety of the thing because I think 30 FPS and 720p is a pretty acceptable. Um, yeah. Right, as long as it's constant. Yeah, constant. It's gotta be. Like I'm not saying I don't want 60. 60 matters. I get it. For some people, it's just unplayable at 60. That's fine. You have platforms to play it on that do 60. Mm-hmm. Um, your dream of having it at 60 on the go just isn't going to exist right now. Um, yeah. But I also recognize the limitations of the hardware. Any current gen game that runs at 60 FPS and 1080p and other platforms is not going to be able to pull that off on Switch. Mm-hmm. So... I accept that. I'm okay with that. My issues, example, with NBA 2K18 were all the bugs mm-hmm. and miss and a couple missing features like the ability to play with friends online. Or they add, they added that now, but at the time you couldn't play with friends online. Um, and don't forget the basically the microtransaction. The microtransaction, like like, <laughs> like the criticism I had of were basically the same criticisms everyone who bought the game on any platform had. Yeah. Uh, I did note that it was a little jarring playing the demo in 60 FPS on Xbox One and then jumping to 30, but I also said after playing, you know, like a week later after playing at 30 on Switch for a week, I started not to notice the differences between the, the FPS as much. Definitely mm-hmm. there. Definitely was smoother. Uh, it definitely a better game on Xbox. But it ended up not bothering me as much as I thought it would. And that's fine. I, I, I have now accepted that frame rate as being an acceptable way to play the game. So that mm-hmm. means I can accept it with Doom. Mm-hmm. I know I can. Not everyone can. If you own a 60 FPS copy, like if I owned NBA 2K18 on Xbox Fire, I'd probably never play on Switch. Because it is better on Xbox. Mm-hmm. But 
I, I, I don't. I just played the demo. I bought it on Switch. I wanted to support third parties on Switch. Maybe I chose a bad game. But then again, I don't know. I love NBA. And I'm going to be playing it for the next half of long. As long as the Bucks are alive for the playoffs, I'm going to be playing it. And they should be a playoff team, even though they're 500 at the time of recording. Um, hopefully, by the time you guys hear this part of the episode, they've won like their next four games. And right. We're, right. we're rocking number one in the East or something. But yeah. hey, hey, I can't say we have a better record than the Cavs. Yeah. They, at this point, that's like four or five in a row. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. LeBron, get your team together. D Wade. Love you, man. Come on. Yeah. Right. Stop comparing this to the Miami Heat situation just because you and LeBron were on that team. <laughs> but you were also like five to eight years This younger. would be comparable to the to the 2014 Miami Heat if it was if Isaiah Thomas, D. Wade. Oh, no, sorry. Because D. Wade won't be considered part of the big three now. So if Isaiah Thomas, Kevin Love, and LeBron James were all healthy. This is more mm-hmm. comparable to Kyrie Irving and LeBron James year one. Mm-hmm. Two superstars. And this time it's Kevin Love, LeBron James, um, and and nothing because your other best, you're, you're actually technically your second best player is hurt, yeah, and Isaiah Thomas supposedly, we'll see. Yeah. He's supposed to be your Kyrie Irving replacement. We'll see what happens. <sighs> I love the NBA. <laughs> Again, that's why I'm like I, I I regret supporting the game I did, but then I know I'm gonna play it a ton. So right, whatever. Get it on Switch. See, I, I'm of mind that every game should come to Switch. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Because it's just too damn convenient. Remember earlier in this podcast, folks, when I said uh, not only am I playing a greater variety of games because I run Nintendo Prime, but I'm finding more time to game because of the Switch. That's exactly why I want every game on Switch, because yeah. I'm not going to be able to find the same amount of time to play games on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One or even PC. Thank you, Nintendo. <laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you. Nintendo. Maybe I should have saw the light with Vita. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I should have. But Sony screwed the pooch. Vita's pretty cool. I, I I never owned one, but I was always jealous of people that have one. And then Actually, so, one and the then I felt awesome. I was one of those fanboys at the time. I'm like, ah, Sony screwed the pooch with a device that should have shattered the 3ds. Yeah, <laughs> should have just should have. wrecked the 3ds. 3ds was yeah. off to a slow start after mm-hmm. the initial launch month. Uh, yep. Nintendo was just screwing the pooch with it, and then Sony just had to go one up Nintendo. They pulled a, a, a Microsoft like with Xbox One and just killed that platform. Oops. So bad. Yep. Oh my gosh, I feel so bad for people who bought a Vita. It should have been great. One um, of the things I actually like most about it is that it is such a great backwards compatible PSP mm-hmm. and PS One classics machine. Yep, it's and what really a lot of people that. loved about it as well is they're like it's the best way to play indie games. And I'm like, yeah. yes. Now people are saying that about Switch, which is great, but it's like, yeah, yeah. I I, I hear you, um, but yeah, th- that's gonna do it for this week's episode of the podcast. Uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I'd say this ran long, but it really just ran about the same time that podcast usually runs. Yeah. Uh, so thank you guys so much for tuning in. Check us out at Patreon.com/slash Nintendo Prime. Uh, Support us there, $5 a month, early access to this very podcast, the full audio version. Uh, We do release it, I think, a day or two later, the full audio on Podbean, which is available as an app on Android. I know you guys want it through some other services. Still working on it. Hopefully by 2018, I'll have that launched. Uh, You can also get it on iTunes. We'll have links to all this down in the description um, on, on YouTube anyways. Obviously, if you're listening to this on iTunes or whatever, there's no links because you're already listening to it that way. Um. Yeah, and obviously go check out 5J. Uh, I do want to end this by saying uh, we hit our goal. 5J is over 300 subs. Hey. Nice. Yeah, quite a bit over. Yeah. Very nice. I think 311 was last I saw. I don't know if it's gone up since then. So at least 315 today. 315. Okay. So Very nice. still climbing. Go over, follow him. He does great work. Streams for us on weekends, although he's going to be going on a little trip for the next couple of weeks. Um, yep. But that's okay. That happens. We Real life. Yep. Right? Real life first. There'll be a day. This, okay, there's not going to be a day. I don't post. But there'll be a day. There will be yeah. a day. Something's going to happen. Um, like as an example, I know that tomorrow my grandpa's going in for uh, to get his heart looked at. So obviously something bad happens there. Yeah, I'm probably going to vanish for a couple of days and you guys will we'll, we'll get an update and understand after the fact, of course. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Ugh, I always worry about my family members sometimes because I'm one of the fortunate people that I'm in my 30s and I, all my grandparents are alive. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Sure. I mean, I should I say fortunate, but like I guess maybe that's not so odd anymore with people having kids in teenage years these days. Yeah. yeah, right. So I don't know. Maybe it's really not that odd, but it feels odd to me because most of my friends don't have their grandparents around anymore, um, or have very few of them. They don't have all mm-hmm. of them. Um, yeah. So go, anyways, go follow Five J. Uh, Five J Gaming. That's all. That's how I always find his YouTube channel. I'm subscribed to it, yeah. yet I always just type Five J Gaming yeah. into the search. <laughs> I'm subscribed to too many channels. I think. Takes me forever to sift through my my subscribe list. Um, he does live streams over there all the time, like all the time. Like even on weekends when he streams for us, he still streams on his channel. Like it's after, true. like or before? No, after. I think after. It's like a power streamer all weekend, baby, <laughs> and all week. <laughs> guys, all, guys, constantly streaming. That's why he's so far ahead in Mario Odyssey because he can stream it like seven days a week. Yeah, it's not that often, but yeah, I, I did. Stream it, feel, it feels that hours. often to me. Yeah, and I say that because like, oh geez, I stream three days a week, and and, and like people are like, what do you mean? Nintendo Prime streams all the time. You you stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, five days stream Saturday and Sunday. That's most of the week. Yeah, yeah, but the, that's not me the whole week. Yeah, well, he streams almost as much as I do <laughs> on my channel. <laughs> oh yeah. man, and obviously Mr. Eric Moore over yeah. here. The old reliable. You, you can follow me absolutely nowhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? Nice. Um, I should tell my editor. Uh, he, he's not going to hear this till the final part of this. So only, maybe he'll get it in for the final part on the video. For for my thing when it pops up and you do at Nate Jance, that's fine. That's my Twitter. For him, do at Ninty Prime. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Since we never works. advertise the fact that we have an actual Nintendo Prime Twitter. Account. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, there um, you go. So literally, his only job here is Nintendo Prime. Yeah. So advertise Nintendo Prime. That'd sure. be great. Um, Eric doesn't use Twitter, doesn't read Twitter, but you know. Yeah. Maybe I'll convince him. I'll be like, hey, look, can you check this once in a while? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Who's crapping on me now? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah. Oh, someone's always crapping on me somewhere. Somewhere. If it's not me, it's somebody else. <laughs> someone's got to fill in for the yeah. the five days that we might not chat unless yeah, right. like an injury happens in yeah, sports. Right. And you're like, who's? Oh yeah. And you're like, did you hear about Deshaun Watson or whatever? Yeah. I'm like, no. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, right. Well, there goes the Texans. Yeah, right. Any hope I had of JJ Watt coming back with them still in the playoff? Home, yeah, probably just as well. Ah, just like the Bills losing on Thursday night football. Yeah, yeah. they're not done, but. I don't know what's up with them. They're so up and down. Yeah. They'll, they'll like, trounce the Falcons and then, then lose to the Jets. I... Welcome. Well, yeah, we yeah. love sports. <laughs> I feel like we should start a sports podcast oh, at some point. Yeah. How many of you guys out there want to see a sports podcast? Let me know. Yeah. Crickets? Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The, that's what I think. <laughs> All right, folks. Thanks for checking out episode 38 of the Nintendo Prime Podcast. It is weekly thanks to our lovely Patreon backers and fans just like you listening. Uh, we always seem to get a couple hundred uh, just like direct feed listeners through Podbean. Not sure how many on iTunes yet because I haven't – I forgot my login. <laughs> nice. So I haven't <laughs> actually checked iTunes in a while. Like We might have a bunch of reviews on iTunes. That's the thing. Hey, one thing I do want to start doing is, is taking more feedback and bringing it up in the episodes. Mm-hmm. So if you guys have any feedback, let us know down in the comments if it's on YouTube – uh, if you review us on iTunes, like let us know. Like go go review us on iTunes, even if you think we're a zero star. I don't care. Yeah. Review and put in a constructive comment about our podcast, so we can one get better, and two have have your feedback directly affect our show in the positive and, or negative. And and don't always forget to feel free to suggest topics as well. Yes, uh, we man, what's the last time we had a fan topic? It's been a while. We have had them. Oh, I know. It's been a while, long while. And, if, you know, if, now that you brought that up, there was one person who asked me a question that I was going to use as a fan topic. I'm going to see if I can dig it up for next week. Mm-hmm. Um, because for those who don't know, I generally come up uh, with all the topics because in Summer Prime, out of all three of us here, this is the only person that this is my job. Yeah. Um, so I don't expect Eric to take time out of his other two jobs and the life he's got going on. And 5J is already busy enough with his job and his wife and everything. Yeah. Um, I'm just thankful these guys apparently care enough to put in some helping efforts. Um, so I try to do as much as I can, something that I bite off more than I can chew. Uh, as an example, today's topics, this is the most unprepared I have been for the podcast uh, since we went weekly. 
Yeah. Uh, the the which was episode thirty four apparently is when we went weekly, and you're like, eh, I didn't get a guest for this podcast until today. I didn't have any topics looked up until today. Yeah. Now I have gotten you the topic list on the day of. Right. That that's but that's right. Normal. Right. Start. I actually had to come up with it. I had to spend like two hours today yeah. coming up with this topic list. Usually that's done. Right on Tuesday. Outside, yeah. I usually leave the, like one like one topic open ended in case uh-huh. something happens. Right. Um, but mm-hmm. I always have like an idea of what I want the all four topics to be. Today I came in today. I'm like I don't have a guest. I don't have topics. Yeah. Are we going super old school? And the hi, welcome to the Ted Ryan podcast. We don't know what to talk about today. Hey, did you play Odyssey? Yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, great. Um, <laughs> see this Amiibo? Doesn't it look cool? Let's review this Bowser Amiibo for the next 20 minutes. Um, I would totally do that. Oh. <laughs> Just start out acting out like different scenes with the, the Amiibos. Would you guys like to see an Amiibo puppet show? Oh, good God. You know, I often do voices when there's like an art. Oh, boy, button. voices. Yeah. Oh, you oh, know what? I have a few of those in my head. We're gonna have to get that in-person podcast coming sometime. And hey, there you go. I am. I'm gonna be hands off. It's gonna be you and Eric coming up with the amiibo puppet show. Oh, good God! With voices. I love it. I'm gonna be behind the camera, making sure we get all the good angles, get all the proper audio, yeah. because you guys won't be able to talk in the mics, right? Because yeah. it's a puppet show. Oh yeah. So right, I'm gonna right. have to set up the mics in, in, in you know, yeah. a, a certain way. But it'll let's make this happen. <laughs> oh, God. It sounds if amazing. You, you know what? I'm putting a poll. <laughs> On this oh, video, boy. if you would like to see the Eric and <laughs> and Five J puppet show <laughs> with voices of all the amiibo we can gather together, whatever story, don't obviously have like a week oh, to prepare Lord. the story. Um, maybe they need more than a week. I don't know. Yeah. Well, how much time do you guys think you need me to pull this together? I don't know. It depends. Is it a steaming pile of garbage? <laughs> <laughs> it's whatever you guys want it to be. It's your show. Oh, Lord. I will try not to laugh because I don't want that picked up by the mics. I will laugh after the fact. Yeah. Or I'll just be like, oh, my God, we're never airing this. <laughs> we'll, we'll just have to record the audio separate from the video. Oh, we'll have to gosh. dub over top. Oh, man. Oh, my um, gosh. Also, uh, someone's going to mention this. Yes, we are going to be starting a new giveaway. Uh, soon. It might already be launched by the time you hear the podcast. Soon. Because uh, I said the stipulation was we had to get 5G to 300. We got him to 300. Thank yes. you so much for your support of his channel and of us. Thanks, so we are going to have a giveaway. I can tell you right now, it's going to have it's going to have to do with third party Ooh. on Switch. So I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, but by now, you might already know what it is. Because I, I think I was planning to launch it by Monday, which is the first day of the podcast. So you know what? No, I'm actually glad I said it since uh, some people get to listen on Sunday. Mm-hmm. because of our, our early access. So, yeah, so on Monday... Another reason to get early access. Yeah, another reason. Early access. Okay. Um, you're going to... Yeah. Well, you're just going to know we're give, having the giveaway because yeah. no one else is going to find out until we actually announce it officially on Monday. Yeah. Um, what that giveaway is going to entail. I'm actually kind of excited about this giveaway because unlike... Uh, made some mistakes with the Odyssey giveaway. Got to learn. Got to yeah. learn. Like announcing a winner for that game like the day before the game comes out. Yeah. Or like th- that was when the contest ended. The winner didn't get announced actually until two days later. Uh, mm. Which is fine. But regardless, obviously they weren't going to get it on launch. Mm. Um, that's something I want to avoid. So I'm either going to make it so obvious that you're not going to get it on launch. Mm. Like, instead of, like, oh, it ends the day before, so make it feel like maybe you can't get it on launch, or it'll be announced, like, so far before a game comes out that you can't get it. Mm. But I can tell you right now, what I'm going to give away will not be something that you are going to be able to have at launch. But when I announce the giveaway, for those listening on Sunday, uh, you're not going to care. It's it's going to be that good. That good of a giveaway. Oh, boy. Um. Needless to say, uh, I I put in some specific hard work this past month planning for this giveaway. You're gonna, it's gonna be awesome. Um, God, stay tuned. Of course, of course, I, I say that, and then all of a sudden, Yulia's van breaks. Yeah, right. uh, and we're getting a new <laughs> transmission and that thing. Yeah, God, transmissions are so expensive. Yeah, well, yeah, this this podcast ended with a Wisconsin goodbye. <laughs> wow, right. that's a thing because oh, yeah. over a, here we a, call it Minnesota goodbye. Oh no, it's it, there's a Wisconsin goodbye Whoa. where where basically say bye 
then he's standing around to talk for another half hour, 45 minutes. Then he's saying goodbye that again. Is, and okay. I was like, what is, half hour, is like, what is the Wisconsin? Wow. I was like, what yeah. is that? I'm like, oh, yeah, I've done that out at the bar a lot. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm heading. I'll see you guys later. And then I come back and I'm like, oh, wait, I forgot. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'll have one more. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Where you sit and talk for another <laughs> Half hour, forty five minutes. Just like that's us after movies all the time too. Yeah. Now like, I know. Oh, we know really should both know we originated. should go and should go to bed, but we're like, nah, we gotta talk. We gotta talk because we could talk all movies. So now we yeah, can talk. Right. All right, folks. That's officially the end. It's been a good one. We're getting tired. Yeah. Time to go pass out and have our podcast editor complain because it's gonna take me three days to get this to him. <laughs> have good a good luck. one, folks. Thank you, Five J. Thank you, everyone. I'm out. Peace. Peace. Thank you.